Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few top eight decks as well as a few cards that have recently spiked due to the Pro Tour. Now the top eight was comprised of decks that mostly are zombies. You do have Aetherwork Marvel as one of the top decks and then the second top deck is zombies. So there is the white black zombies. It's truly just a splash of white. And then there's a mono black zombies. And the good and what's good about these two zombie decks, they are incredibly cheap. The Aetherwork Marvel deck pretty much survived by substituting Emma Cole with her cousin, or I guess sister, right? Uh, and the Ceaseless Hunger. So it's a one-to-one -one substitution, which makes the deck viable again. There is also a single energy deck in the top eight. Also in the top eight, we see four Gideons. And that's interesting that the Gideons are not that many of them. And Gideon of Trials totally flopped. Uh, we don't see any copies of that in the top eight, I believe. So price point, it's going to go down quite a bit. Uh, Lily will go down. None of the Planeswalkers are seeing it play from Amaket. Amaket actually is only 10% of this meta when it consists of 15% of the cards. So it's okay. It's not dominant though. Next, we will talk about Teamwork Aetherworks Marvel. Teamer. Uh, Chandra Torch, Torch of Defiance is the Planeswalker of choice in this deck. You do have lots of things that can generate energy because you will want to play your Aetherworks Marvel. And your finisher is the Ceaseless Hunger and you have four copies of that. Very good deck, plays just like every single other Aetherworks Marvel deck. Still very strong, they just made a simple replacement. It's a one-to-one -one replacement. Hey, they banned Emrakul, we'll just find the biggest, baddest creature that replaced it. And that's what happened. Uh, this deck does not really involve any new Amaket cards. If you take a look at the deck list, it's still just Aether Revolt and Kalidas. Actually, I'm looking at the deck list and I don't see any Amaket cards in this deck. So this would have been a great deck to put some money behind before the Pro Tour or if you already had it built uh, using the Emicom. You can just substitute the Emicoms out. And now you have a top deck. So I, I've always liked this deck. It's very creative. It's very combo centric. The question was, was the Ceaseless Hunger as good as Emiko? The answer is no, but it's good enough to still win a ton of games. This deck is known. This deck has been known for a, lo a long time. I'm going to now take a look at the mono black deck. And the key to this deck is extremely cheap. Uh, so we have Crypt Breaker, we have Dread Wanderer, which is a Amaket card, Metallic Mimic. These are all cards that we saw spike yesterday. Relentless Dead, which we'll talk about today as a $20 card. Lord of the Accursed, which is, you know, plus one, plus one for zombies. Diagraph Colossus, which we talked about yesterday. So out of these cards, we've talked about Crypt Breaker, Dread Wanderer, Metallic Mimic, Relentless Dead, we'll talk about today. Diagraph Colossus, they have all spiked up in price. And Dark Salvation is very, very good. We'll talk about that today as well. So in your sideboard, you do have free Liliana, the last hope. But for FNM purposes, you don't actually need it. You have Fatal Puss, you only have two of those. You have Grasp of Darkness, which is, used to be a common, I believe it's an uncommon now. And free Liliana's Mastery, which we talked about yesterday. So all of these cards have already spiked, but the good news is... They're like not oppressive spikes. They spiked from like 50 cents to $3. There was a time you could have honestly made this deck for probably less than $20 because your land base for the mono black version is very cheap as well. You have 22 swamps and two West Vale Abbeys, but you honestly don't even need the West Vales. You could make an easy budget version of this deck by removing the fatal pushes, which is $4. It's kind of funny that the Uncommon is one of the most valuable cards in the deck. 
and removing the West ha West Vale Abbeys. And the Liliana's the Last Hope and the Cyborg, you don't really need them. I did want to take some time to talk about now we will also because MTG stocks we will also show the European price. There is a big price difference. I'm not sure why the price difference or if it makes sense if someone lives in Europe to buy these cards and then ship them. The question is, will the card go down? And some of them were not. This is one of those cards that has trouble falling down after it spikes up. The reason is there will always be more Minotaurs. We are still looking for the epic Colossus Minotaur to play this card with. So it costs one free, you get to put a Minotaur into play from your hand. Very good. It does have summoning sickness, but I believe, yeah, it looks like you can play this as instant speed. <laughs> That's very, very good. You don't even need to tap it, so you could play this multiple times a turn. The problem is the Minotaurs have been met uh, so far. Uh, we are looking for that, I don't know, like maybe it costs 14 mana and it's like a 12-12 Minotaur with Trample. Then this would be a good card. Uh, and this card will actually spike uh, in a exponential way. Overall, I, I just don't see this card ever going down due to the fact that there will always be more Minotaurs. I don't know when. I, in Hour of Devastation, maybe we get a Minotaur champion of some type to promote the tribe because the tribe has been very weak. Uh, it's not very good. But if it gets good, you can bet this card will be valuable. Next, we look at the best board removal in red. Since the dawn of magic, we've had lots of cards like this where the, it either does two damage or it does three damage, and then it has upside. It's very good. This type of card has always been very good because it can board wipe, especially if you're playing the Aetherwork Marvel decks, due to the fact that you're not really aggro and you are long term. And you just need to board wipe your opponent uh, to reset. So you can collect your energy. You can play your Aether Work Marvel one time. It's a very good card. It will be very good. It is $2.50. And this shows you kind of the change in prices. Maybe it's due to the masterpieces. I don't know how much pressure. I, mean, I know that some pressure is applied when you have a set with masterpieces. Uh, downwards pressure on the price point. But as to this card, typically is five to seven dollars. Now it is two dollars and fifty cents at the highest. I do expect it to fall under two dollars, and that shows you that cards in standard have gotten a lot cheaper than normally. And you look at the standard decks, you look at the mono black deck. There's not that much value. There's not many valuable cards in it, and some of the most valuable cards in any set are the lands and the lands are decently priced but not not too much right you used to have the blue red lands be more expensive than the rest but since they banned the Sahili combo that's no longer true and they're just the lands are incredibly cheap right now next we are going to talk about this card which has finally finally hit over twenty dollars again Obviously, the mono black zombie deck and the white black zombie deck. I want to call it a black zombie deck with a splash of white. I've done extremely well. I didn't expect them. You know, what I expected to see was a 12 Gideon deck. But that deck is very weak. And the deck is weak to aggro because you can't just sit on your Gideons and hope that, oh, good. Because the zombies are going to come after you, and there's going to be a lot of them. They truly feel like a zombie deck. And most of the Beller zombies are not from the new Amaket set. Most of the Beller zombies are from Shadows of Innistrad, Aldric Moon. So those boxes, those boxes now have more value, right? Your Lilies, your Relentless Deads are in your Aldric Moon. So luckily I have just fat packs and boxes of Eldritch Moon, which I got for really cheap because there was a time when Emiko was banned and you were either going to pull Liliana of the Last Hope or not. Now you also have Relentless Dead as a nice $20 card 
overall, like the entire set of the Eldritch Moon Shadows of Innistrad, a lot of bulky cards are now no longer bulk. Like Crit Breaker can make back the value of your pack. So let's talk about this one. It's probably the most uh, drastic spike um, being from, it looks like sub 15, maybe 15 to $30 pretty much overnight. And then your price is still 16, so it hasn't much changed. So I kind of wonder if it is possible because this card is absolutely vital. I don't feel like it's going to go down that much. Maybe it goes down to 25, but you cannot play the top deck in standard which has four copies in the top eight. I believe it's four copies of Aether Warp Marvels two, and three copies of a variant of zombies, either mono black or mono black with a white splash, and then one copy of black green energy. This is a good card. This card is a ample replacement for Emiko. It does exactly what you need it to do when you need to do it, and it's big and bad, and it's just going to kill your opponent. So I love the card, and I love the fact that you can still play the deck. You just have to change out one card. Yes, the card is now super expensive, and yes, the card the card was always going to be good in EDH or otherwise. The card was never going to be bad. So having extra copies of this card is probably okay in terms of long term because it's just such a good card. And lastly, we're gonna talk about Eldritch Moon Bulk, uh, Eldritch Moon and Shadow over Innistrad. A lot of these cards, these zombie cards that you need to make your mono black deck, even the land of Westvale Abbeys, they are found in Shadows over Innistrad slash Eldritch Moon, and the prices have really, really done well. And so these packs are no longer as these packs, the value of the packs, the expected value of the packs have increased surprisingly because the Pro Tour Amaket is supposed to promote Amaket cards. But what came out was a zombie deck that, yes, uses some Amaket cards, but a large majority of the strongest cards for this deck are in past sets. So overall, I, I do like where Standard is going. The zombie deck should be very fun to play with, and at least it's not four Gideons or a 12 Gideon deck. Gideon or Trials was an epic fail. Um, Liliana, the new one, was also not seen anywhere in play. And even Gideon Ally of Zendikar only had four copies in top eight. There are more copies of Chandra than there are of Gideon. Now that tells you what type of deck people are playing and that depends on that. But overall, it's very fascinating how the meta is shifting, and if you can get the zombie decks now, I, I just feel like they will be very fun to play with, and you at least have until Hour of Devastation. And Hour of Devastation, I don't believe is going to shift and make those decks weaker. If anything, we will have more zombies, right? And then the deck will be even stronger. But, uh, so, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Bye, guys.